what are the troubleshooting? What are the things that can go wrong when you do this uh, mausolation? Now, the first is you may have difficulty in pushing the back into the abdominal cavity. I mentioned this to you all. My, my, my suggestion to you all is do not use a trocar. Ensure that the skin incision is at least 12 millimeters and roll the back from bottom to up so that you don't trap the gas inside the back. This is my suggestion. That's what I showed you all. Okay, next problem will be twisting of the sleeve. As I showed you, this sleeve may get twisted. Uh, and I explained to you, I'll show you again, how do you prevent uh, or make sure that it is not twisted? Because if it's twisted, when you put in the troca, you're going to perforate it and that's going to cost you money. You're going to use another bag then and do all over again. So you, the idea is actually first ensure that the camera, the arrow is facing the mouth of the camera port, then place the troca into the mouth and insufflate, and then note that the gas is coming out here, and then you place the camera under direct vision. You watch under direct vision, you can see the camera. So if you're using a 10 millimeter camera, you can use it on both sides to look, and then you can come in and then look, put in the troca. I, I hope it's clear. Some, some of the participants yesterday had, were a bit confused about this. If you're confused, then go to Adachi uh, booth and you can see the back and we can show you how, how to go about it. Next is inability to insufflate the back. Sometimes you put in everything, but the, get, the, get, the back is not expanding or it's collapsing. The reason is because gas is escaping. And where is it escaping? It usually doesn't escape from the sleeve. It escapes from the mouth of the back. So this happened to me quite often, even last week. And what happens is when this happens, what you do is, here is where it's leaking. So you need to prob probably clip, clip it with an artery forceps. Sometimes your incision may be too big uh, for putting it in. And so you may even have to clip the skin so that the gas doesn't escape. And once they have done that, then the back will be full and you can do the surgery. Unable to place the fibroid into the back because the fibroid is too large. So yesterday, somebody really was asking me, if you, how big a fibroid can you put inside this bag? This bag, although the dimension, we just saw the big one is only 22 centimeters, but it's impossible to put, a, a, say, a 15, 16, sometimes 17 centimeter fibroid into this bag because you've got no space to work. You cannot put it in. So my suggestion is actually to cut the fibroid into two or three pieces and mosaic one at a time. You can use the same bag, okay? Don't use three bags. It's going to increase your cost. So what you do is, I use a knife, I cut the fibroid, okay? I cut the fibroid into two or three pieces. This one, this is a large fibroid. I think it's about 17 or 18 centimeter fibroid. So I use a knife directly through the skin and then cut it. And once the fibroid is cut, you cut it completely into half. So once the fibroid is cut into half, then you can actually place half the fibroid into the bag, mosolate. You can put the bag inside again, put the next half and mosolate. So this is a this is a suggestion that you may want to think about. Next is accidental puncture of the bag. Uh, what happens is when we are using very sharp tenaculum. And when you're removing this, you may accidentally clip this back, catch the back, and make a hole in the back. You, usually, this happens towards the end of the procedure, not at the beginning. Beginning, you're usually OK because you're holding big structure. Towards the end, you may accidentally puncture. If you puncture, everything is going to collapse. Then you're going to have trouble. So be careful when, you, when you're using the tenaculum. Lastly, too many fibroids. Yesterday, I think one of the professors was telling me that he lost one fibroid while he was uh, doing mausolation, because if you've taken out six fibroids, and then you put the bag in, you start looking for the fibroids, you may lose one fibroid. So what I do is, I stitch them together. I use, put a, put a suture in, I stitch all the fibroids together, make it into a chain, and then leave it one side, and then I can take everything and put it into the bag. Okay, this is another, another uh, trick that you may want to do. You don't want to put in the fibroid and then start looking for the, 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 the fibroid. So in summary, if you are going to do power mausolation, performing in-back mausolation is a good technique to prevent dissemination of uh, fibroid tissue. 
There are many banks in the market now. Now, after three years, I've been using this. There are other banks in the market, but I think this is a fairly good bag. I think I was told that it's the only bag available in, in, in Japan now. And this bag also provides view with a disposable uh, oscillator, which is a very good oscillator uh, to do this uh, uh, power oscillation. Okay, thank you.